Hey everyone, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to Pokemon Gold. This is turn 41, I believe. Uh, let's jump into the turn. Alright, so we have a whole crap ton of stuff to get through. Um, as per normal, we will kind of gloss through things and try to focus on the more important stuff. So just going to go down the line. We have completed Conjuration 4 and are on our way into Con Construction 7. Uh, no new magic sites. Found a druid's grave. That's a one um, nature gem site, so nice. Uh, got stellar focus up. Cool. Um, didn't find anything. And then we have a bunch of different things. We've gotten um, assassinated by a guitarist in... Where's this at? Ah. Interesting. So that's kind of in a random scenario. Or random location. Um, we have attacked in Griffin Rock, uh, but there's a fortress. Uh, didn't run into anything. We uh, got our stuff taken back over in Three Pine Grove. Uh, we actually lost this fight, um, and this is going to be one of the important ones, so we'll come back to this and I'll show you why we lost this fight and why we might just lose the war in the long run because. Yeah. Um, we won this fight. Uh, won this fight, but died to some unfortunate stuff. And we'll probably touch on this as well. But we did take the province back. Um, lost Berman Heights, lost Kunal. And these were because we couldn't, you know, put any province defense. Or well, Kunal's because we attacked again. Um, and of course, the AI Saffron is fucking with me and not with Olivine, but whatever. Uh, Helmet has come to siege us in Impassable Mountains. Uh, we took, um, Giant Spine back with a little raiding party. Uh, our raiding party in Trouble Bog in his actual territory, uh, took a... Auto land. Um, we were beaten on Viridian City. This is our little um, thug, and we're going to watch that when we get here, or when we come back. Um, we, This is our little thug rolling around in his uh, territory. Um, he took Saffron City, which sucks because that means we lose like six Astral Pearls per turn, um, but it kind of is what it is. Um, we got some gold, which is very important for us because we are very gold-starved right now. Um, there's an upcoming battle arena. Uh, Irma was discovered in Greenwall. This is unfortunate. Irma's Greenwall is the the fortification just south of his uh, uh, capital. She's been patrolling there for a very... Or she's been instilling uprising there for a very long time. And it's... Uh, his, his unrest there is very high. It's like 80 or something like that. But... Now that she's gone, it's probably going to drop pretty quickly. Um, so, she finally got discovered. We're under siege in Impassable Mountains, in Viridian City, in Griffin Rock, in Kunal, in Omicria. We got some battle affliction secured. Uh, we have a lack of supplies. We've got some promotions, etc. Okay, so there were a couple of important battles. Uh, we're going to check them out. Uh, one is in Omicria, one is in Viridian City, um, and the other, where was the other? This is important one. This, let's, uh, the other is in Kratos. This isn't super important, but, um, this is just a show of, uh, an example of needing to make sure I'm doing the right things going into situations. So we have this little troop of Arcanines, which is more than capable of running in here and taking care of this province defense. One province defense, and probably even up to six province defense, depending on the province defense type. The problem is, is they're not set to attack. They're not set to anything. So they're running forward and they're just using flamethrower. And they have a lot of flamethrower attacks. Now the flamethrower attacks just aren't that great. Um, they're not going to beat this fortress. They could potentially pop the uh, the gentleman, right? But what ends up happening is uh, the fortress manages to hold off people, right? 
And eventually, we popped the gentleman. So we went, right? Except at this point, our hold command has run out, and our crush girl has rushed forward, and she is now in the heat aura of the Arcanines, so she gets burned. Um, had I just had the Arcanines set to attack closest, they would have rushed in and they would have Crunch. Now, Crunch is significantly more dangerous than their Flamethrower attack. Uh, they would have just rushed in and crunched down on whatever, and that would have been a very quick battle. Um, so that's my own fault. I gotta, I have to make sure that when I'm doing stuff like that, I am scripting things correctly so that that doesn't happen. Um, so now we have the Omicria battle and the Viridian City battle. And we're going to take each of these in uh, turn. So we'll watch the, Viridi the Omicria battle. And really, there's not a whole lot to say about what's going on here. Um, it's very simple. I mean, you can see it right there. Uh, he has a schoolgirl fluffer that is casting body ethereal um so the schoolgirl puts body ethereal on the steelix champion i don't have and i fucking hate this like it's, it's legitimately to the point to where i feel like every I, i'm just gonna take magic weapons on every single bless i ever have for the rest of eternity unless my sacreds already have but here's the thing uh, okay and that's the thing that annoys me, right? I didn't take magic weapons on this bless because I knew I would have access to so many different sacreds that would have magic weapons, so many other units that would have magic weapons. Like, I have 100 plus Ampharoses right now that have very good magic damage. So I don't want to take the scenario of like, well, you got to have magic weapons no matter what every single time, because that's not true. It's just, I ran into a situation where I have these unkillable god kings, and the only things that's really hurting them right now are these machamps. And if these machamps had magic weapons, then that would have been, that would have done the deal. They don't. So, you know how this is going to work. They're going to run in, and they will occasionally still hit him. Um, it's just a very low chance. Uh, and because of the obscene amount of regeneration that he has, it's just, we're never going to get him before he goes down. Okay? So, he he actually kills a goodly number of our black belts, just uh, rampaging around before we rout but we do all basically retreat into Omicria. Well, that's a bit of a problem, because now he's sieged Omicria, and the walls are breached, right? Uh, now, the Fluffer did retreat, right? But in theory, if they retreated to an adjacent province, um, they can just come in next turn and try to do something. We're going to see how that works. Um... Basically, I have a little bit of a plan. I don't think he's going to force it in Omicria immediately, but but this is this is just a sign of upcoming troubles, right? Um, as he gains more access to other fluffers or other magic items or other research, right, the window in which we can deal with these Steelixes is going to close. Uh, now, granted, of course, as we gain more research and more magic items, the window, the uh, the answers that we have um, increase. But really, there's only so much. <laughs> and um, it's uh, we're, we're basically about to start putting a whole lot of eggs in one basket. Um, and I'm not sure how it's going to work out for us. So we will we will have to see how it goes. Um, OK. So that is a that's a big loss for us, right? We lost about half of our um, combat prowess here, but this is still an effective fighting force if it can be relieved. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about a couple ways we might be able to do that. So Viridian City is the sign of the next fight, and this is where our thug tried to take on a Steelix champion. Um, and this is a twofold scenario. So 
we already know we are beaten, right? But we want to watch what happens. So right now we've got we've got Nejdego. He has blessed himself, right? He has this little bless. None, nothing too big, right? He's not super strong. But these eye catchers are, are armor negating, okay? Armor negating. And if he, if he blinds the... If he blinds the Steelix, there is the chance... It's unlikely, right, that he's going to win because he's still probably just not going to be able to do enough damage and he'll get trampled and then he'll run away. But there is the chance that if he blinds the Steelix, the Steelix is just going to be woefully ineffective and then we can slowly but surely chip him down. Un super unlikely. But let's watch what happens. So, the Hitmonlee and the Tyrogues come in um, as distractions. The Iron Skin's up. And... Okay, so that's 7 damage. I can actually turn on the very detailed log. That's 7 damage, and we're going to go here, was him popping the offensive Tyrogue. Okay. And it does this every time. So now we have done... So the Cianwood City Black Belt landed and did his attacks. And his attacks were two eye catchers, right? Um, and then a like a kick and a dynamic punch. Uh, okay. So we're going to note... So we hit, right? We hit with one. We got an eight on the attack roll. We hit with one and we lost an eye. Or, or he, he, we have scooped an eye. Fantastic. We just got to scoop another eye. Except we're not going to scoop another eye because look at the stats here. And this is, I, I, I don't, I don't know if this is just like the craziest irony on the face of the fucking planet or what. But basically. His he got some he got some attacks repelled. One of the eye catchers got through, but many of his other attacks got repelled. And when you repel, right? If the person um, fails the morale check, the attack just doesn't happen. But if they succeed the morale check, right? And this guy actually has decent morale if you, because of the fucking dragon helm. If you ex su succeed on the morale check, you'll still make the attack, but you'll get hit for one damage, right? The, the couple points of damage that we took from pushing through on the repel checks, the one damage that we were taking from the Steelix each time, blinded us. How the fuck is that for irony? Like, holy fucking shit. We came in with the purpose, the, the concept of swooping in and scooping out the eyeballs of the Steelix. And we do, we get one, right? And in that, in that moment of getting one, we, we get repelled at least, I think, three times because we've taken three damage. And one of those repels blinds us. So now we are basically incapable. I say incapable. He still has defense zero, right? Which you would think like, okay, that means that means he can do it. Uh, but actually, he's just going to repel all of our shit now. And our skill is never going to break through um, his ability to repel us. Uh, so what happens is, is he just tramples, tramples, tramples. And we start to take a little bit of damage. And we flee. <laughs> that is the worst fucking irony in the world. Um, that's just crazy bad. But it is what it is, right? I'm, I'm not, I'm not super upset about it, right? Um, that is just how it be. Um, so that's what's happened in Viridian City. So let's actually take a look at what is going on this turn. Um, uh, we've got a lot of moves all over the place. Um, and I will cover them as I have been. We're going to cover them on the Viridian front. Um, our spies continue a spy in. Of note, we are actually moving in Evida back down or down into Greenwall to take over for the, the spy that just got captured and killed. 
Um, we are moving around Falco. We're going to just start bouncing around raiding. We're trying to leave a little bit of province defense. The only reason we have money, by the way, is because we got that gold event. Otherwise, we would still be flat broke, um, which is just super unfortunate. We're going to try to deal with that this turn, but uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, we're raiding around with Urborn. Um, he's going to get caught eventually. It, I, I anticipate him getting killed. Uh, there's not really a whole lot that he can do about the situation. But we'll see. Maybe maybe he toughs it out for a while. Um, and we're actually moving Umbra from inside Trinspor. Because no one wants to take Trinspor because of the giraffe rigs. Um, but from within Trinspor, we're actually attacking into more Olivine city land. Um, and this is how we're going to try to start doing things. We're going to try to start raiding around all of his provinces, doing what we can to um, hurt his income, basically. Um, so that's what's happening in the Olivine City front. In the Saffron City front, uh, not a lot's happening on our end of the deal. Well, I say that. Uh, so I think we're going to start including like Griffin Rock and Omicria in the Saffron City front, because they're previous Saffron City territory. So we're storming the castle in Griffin Rock. We're doing this for um, a couple reasons. One of the re <laughs> rather than just moving, um, we're actually storming the, um, the fortress here, because there's the chance that there's some mages inside, and we want to pop them if we can. The other thing is the unrest here is insane. Saying. He torched it, didn't he? He he started fucking. If he's if he is pillaging things, I am gonna be so fucking pissed off. Ooh, I'm gonna be real fucking pissed if he's actually pillaging things. Like, so it's one thing. I'm trying to not be salty. It's one thing that you already have an extremely overpowered scenario. And I'm the one talking, right? Because I have the, the bugged machokes, right? But it's one thing. But if you actually start pillaging land in a war with someone, one, I think pillaging land in this game is kind of a bullshit mechanic. Um, like in a scenario where, like, you know you're... Even, even if it's not a no, you know you're losing, like... If you pop someone's fort and you know you're not going to hold it or you don't want to put the emphasis on holding it and you actually pillage it down, you're a you're a shitty <laughs> Like, I get it. I get it. It's a strategy game. I do get that. But that's such a dick move. Like, it's... It, it, you know what's important? is It's a strategy game. Right? And that's not fun in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So anyways, I, that might not be the case. I might just be blowing up over nothing. But we're going to storm the castle. Um, there is a great gold mine here. We need sources of income. We're trying to find those. Um, Omicria is really where the um, scenario, or where the hot moment in Saffron City is, is right now. And you can, you can probably tell because of all this gear that's on Chuck. So we have basically cannibalized the gear that was on Nezdego, right? Um, we've put all of that gear, not all of it, but we've put a good portion of it on Chuck. Chuck now has very high strength. Um, he has multiple uh, armor-piercing attacks. Now, these attacks are... Um, they are pierce damage. They are going to get reduced in efficacy by the um, resistances of a Steelix. However, it, they also... I don't know. It's basically all we got, right? So, if he attacks us in Omicria, I have everyone off to one side. Um, and, and Chuck's not even Divine Blessing. I'm actually doing Blessings on other people. Uh, our Flyers are going to go try and pop the Ethereal... The, the, any casters, any fluffers that might actually be there. Because I don't know that he only has one. He might have another one that he's sending in. Who knows? Um... And um, Chuck is off on the corner, and he's getting a regeneration cast on him. We're doing some swarm casting. Uh, Chuck's going to buff himself up and basically turn himself into a bit of a thug, right? Um, including casting Strength of Giants. Um, and we're going to see how it goes. Uh, if he attacks us this turn, it's the answer is probably going to be not very well, is how it goes. 
Um, but we have an we have an alternative there. We're gonna come back to it. So over here in Kunal, I'm I'm actually saying this is the Viridian front, right? Um, so in the Viridian front, um, Kunal is not broken. The fortification is not broken yet, which is good because we can't really do anything about it right now. Um, so we're basically hoping that the fortification stays unbroken. Um, we are moving Sethen into Three Pine Grove um, to do a raid. We're moving Wiglia up. We want to get Wiglia up and into uh, other territory. Into Olivine's territory, basically. Um, so we're going to see how that goes. In Viridian City itself, Nezdego is getting sent probably on a suicide mission. Um, he's no longer blind, by the way. He, he got cured. Um, but he's being sent on a suicide mission into the arena. And it's mostly because the last time there was an arena, basically no one got sent. So we're going to see if, uh, if no one gets sent. More than likely, a Steelix will kill us there. And even if it's not a Steelix, someone else is probably going to kill us there because Nezdega is not exactly like kicking ass or anything like that. Um, but we'll see. We're also breaking siege with Kathlin. And this is what Kathlin has. So Kathlin is breaking siege with a couple of Machamps. Um, now these aren't sacred Machamps or anything like that. These are Team Rocket Machamps and just regular Machamps, as well as some Team Rocket Nidokings. Kings, okay? And what we're doing here is, is we're going to summon Earth Power and basically try to hit these guys with some Strength of Giants casts. If we can get Strength of Giants off on them, Strength of Giants is plus four strength. If we can get Strength of Giants off on them, we get these Karate Chops and Low Kicks up to a decent amount. Um, an amount that could actually harm the Steelix. Now, the Steelix here has... Um, let's check again real quick. He's got multiple... Um, especially after the fight, he's got multiple afflictions, he's got a limp, uh, he's weakened, and he's lost an eye. So his stats are pretty rough right now. Um, his protection is very high. He's got uh, Iron Will, so he's also got very high magic resist, right? Um, but my hope is, is that his low... Um, number of attacks, etc., is is going to allow us to beat him. And here's the other kicker, and and this is kind of a, a proof of concept. I'm curious as to whether or not this will actually work. Now the Steelixes have um very high poison resist. They have 25 poison resist, which is basically immune to most damaging poison, right? Except these Nidokings have a Poison Jab, which is decently high damage, right? Um, and the effect on... Oh, sorry, it's not that one. Is it not that one? Oh, am I thinking of the wrong part? I am thinking of the wrong one. Hmm. I am thinking of the wrong one. It's not the Nidokings that I need to be sending. Is it? Oh, it's going to take years. It's the Nitto Queens that I need to be sending because the Nitto Queens have a body slam. This is absolutely. This is what I'm. This is what I'm interested in sending. The Nitto Queens have a body slam. Um, so with a plus four strength, right? Um, they can get up to the point to where it, it will be extremely unlikely. Right? It'll be very hard to actually do, but. A body slam could do enough damage to get past his armor. And if it does enough, like, just, just like one or two damage, right? Like, with a high roll, it could do, like, one or two damage. And with a high roll, it could fatigue him. And fatiguing him is going to increase the damage he takes. So this is, this is, what, uh, this is good that I caught this. Because it's not supposed to be the Nitto Kings. It's supposed to be the... We'll put them right there. It's supposed to be the Nitto Queens that go out. Because the Nitto Kings, the, the strong poison is not going to do anything. Um, yeah, it's it's wrong peoples. 
So we're going to send them out, basically, um, with the hope that a combination of high damage attacks and high damage fatigue poison, or high fatigue poison, is enough to fatigue him out, right? Do some chip damage and fatigue him out real quick. And then um, actually pop him down. Have the, have the leftover attacks actually hurt him enough to kill him. I don't know that that's actually going to happen. Um, but we're going to try. We're going to try. Um, so we'll see how it goes. That is the plan there. And really the reason why I'm doing that is because I really need to get him off of Viridian City. Because I need, I need income. I am dying. I'm going to lose this game because of the income problem that's I'm that I'm having which is which is incredibly funny to me right because my income is still the fucking second of the goddamn game it's just my upkeep is also abysmal right um so that's the Viridian city front basically uh, and then we are down into the Cienwood city front so we have got a couple things doing uh, we are moving our uh, counter raiders around just to find opportune locations, okay? We're moving Irma into the um, Arcanine scenario. We're going to try to pick those up if we have the opportunity to. Um, if we do, we are going to uh, script correctly and start leading them around in counter raids. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We are busting off of... Uh, impassable mountains with Modic over here. He's got 20 um, Ampharoses that I think are going to be more than enough to um, deal with Helmet, basically. Um, so that's kind of the plan there. And then we are moving Yazar back onto Cienwood, and in Cienwood we've got a whole lot of stuff going on. Um, and what is that? Why, am I, why have I got these people? Oh, I was I was checking to see like who am I moving around? What can I do, etc. Because I am currently okay. We'll get there. So with Zarin, I am currently moving him out, and you can see he's got he's got just random crap kind of thrown in. Um, but this random crap is stuff that I want to go kill off. It's stuff that is it's costing me money every year. Um, especially these Hitmonchans. Again, this all goes to the scenario of, of, if I was, if I was fighting someone, like, Vir Viridian City, or Saffron City, or Ecrutique, or Vermilion City, or Violet City, if I was fighting someone, anyone who did not have singular super combatant units that could kill everything in God's existence. <laughs> then then the game plan would be going as, as normal, right? Like, the whole plan for me playing CN Wood was because I wanted to have a bunch of different types of units. I wanted to really experience all the different Pokemon. I wanted to make different teams like a poison team and an electric team and a flying team, right? And send them out with different, um, uh, basically different leaders and have them, like, that's why I have a very generic a bless, just to kind of, like, help out, not to not to make anything super crazy or killy, right? Um, if I was fighting against anything that wasn't these Steelixes, it would, it would be okay, right? Like, we would be... Um, having this scenario where our units aren't useless. But right now, we have a shit ton of units that are useless, and our plan is to start killing them off. Um, would they potentially be useful if we could beat Olivine and then fight someone else? Absolutely they would be useful in that scenario. That scenario might never happen. That scenario might be 10 turns from now. That scenario might be 20 turns from now. That scenario might be 50 turns from now. But right now, they're useless to me, and I need them to die. <laughs> so we're going to start making these little suicide squads where we we, we send them out. And, and we're going to try to do things with them 
first and foremost, right? We're not just um, killing them immediately, but I'm going to send th do things like send them against Saffron and then send them like into his actual heartland, right? We're going to just send troops and leaders. Actually, we've got another fucking group right here. I'm going to send this out as well. Um, oh, I don't want... Oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not doing it this yet. He, he's got to wait because I need to... I don't have enough that I want to kill off yet. So I need to wait like another turn or two. Um, and you might have noticed with uh, Hedna, we've stopped um, we've stopped entering our CN Wood City site, right? And the reason why we've stopped entering the site is because all we're getting out of it, most we're getting some occasional like other things, but mostly we're getting Hitmonchan's and Hitmonlees, and they are useless to us right now. the The Hitmonlees are potentially good for raiding. But they're both so incredibly expensive that they're actually a detriment to us right now. So we're 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 cutting that off right now. Um, aside from that, one we have gotten another uh, priest three, so that's good. Um, we're getting some black belts, which is good. Kinda, I guess. Um, I I'm I gotta keep in mind he's we've only seen one fluffer right obviously he's going to be trying to get more but this is not the end of the world necessarily it's just a sign uh, that things are are going south right so what are we doing in response we're forging gear we're forging a shit ton of gear we're forging a dragon helm we're forging a gate cleaver we're forging boots of giant strength and boots of quickness because i'm not sure which ones i want for which scenarios so i want access to options more often than not we're probably going to be using Boots of Quickness so that we can get multiple extremely high damage attacks in um, and go from there, right? Uh, we're forging an Armor of the Knights. We're forging a Girdle of Might. We're forging more Boots of Quickness. Um, basically, we're trying to forge all of this different stuff to make it to where... Um, to make it to where we have options both next turn for Chuck in case he doesn't get attacked this turn because we would rather quick kit him out with something like boots of quickness and a gate cleaver right that would be a little better oh we're also forging a ring of regeneration up here and we're probably going to do that every single turn we can um for as long as we have kathlin basically um so we'll see how that goes we might not have kathlin for very long she might be dead next turn so um but that's the plan Right? Uh, we're trying to get gear to outfit both Chuck and to outfit Golems as soon as we get them. Um, so we won't have them next turn. Right, um, Next turn we will be most of the way through construction the turn after. So this is turn 41. The turn 42. Turn 43 we will have, have Golems online. We will, it's unlikely that we have enough pearls. We will likely alchemize death gems or fire gems um, to get the pearls that we need so that we can immediately have a summon one and have one on turn 44. And on turn 44, my intention is to have that thing fully equipped and it is probably going to be... It's probably going to be teleporting hopefully on something on turn 45 <sighs> but <sighs> that's that's a lot of pearls right we need saffron city so that we have the pearl income to be doing what we're doing um or what we're wanting to do and this isn't even a guaranteed answer by the way just as a heads up right like a, a, a golem is strong and it's going to be an effective scenario against the Steelixes. Um, but if he if, if he starts outfitting the Steelixes with gear, they're just going to kill the golems, right? The whole trick with the golems being effective against the Steelixes is basically the Steelixes don't have magic attacks. Just like my, my Machamps don't have magic attacks. So if he starts equipping the Steelixes with actual gear, then we're just fucked, right? Um... So we'll see how that goes. No idea if he 
just doesn't have the resources or if he just doesn't feel like he can or if he's trying to be a good sport and not do that. I don't know. Um, we'll see. But um, after that, our if that doesn't work, our options become extremely narrow. And the reason our options become extremely narrow is, is because we do not have good access to the um, instant uh, spells, basically. Like, we don't have good access to Soul Slay. Um, we don't have good access to Disintegrate. We don't have good access to Charm, to Enslave Mind. Um, now, those things can all succeed against the Steelixes if you have enough of it, if you have enough penetration. Though, again, right, we go back to that scenario of they have so much magical resistance that I don't even know that that would work. Um, so, <laughs> I, I'm not quite grasping at straws yet, um, but we are definitely getting to that point to where the Steelixes are basically crazy unkillable god kings, and I'm not sure that, that I'm going to be able to pull this one out. Um, the alternative... Is basically to say, uh, I I'm gonna try to see how this works in another couple turns. If if we're just getting slaughtered though, which we might be, we might just get slaughtered. Um, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not just gonna scream and cry about it or anything like that. But I'm gonna go to the to the Discord and I'm basically just gonna be like, hey, look, uh, Olivine's kicking my ass and he's gonna bowl over me very quickly um people need to start doing stuff against him or else the game's over in a in a coalition environment it's entirely possible that olivine loses it's entirely possible that he wins just because <laughs> these steelixes are crazy but it's entirely po entirely possible that he gets crushed just because of the sheer number of foes that he's dealing with you know, losing economy, losing, etc. you know. So, I don't like doing that, though. I don't like going into a scenario and being like, um, okay, let's uh, 3v1 this guy. Let's 4v1 this guy. That doesn't feel good. Um, but at the same time, I, well, uh, that's nothing. Like, I don't, I don't really have, like, a response to that. It doesn't feel good. Um, I, and I'm not going to like try to force it. I'm not going to try to, to do it, like lean into it heavily. And again, I'm going to try, I'm not going to say anything. I mean, everyone knows how, how powerful these are. Like n this isn't a secret right now. We're, we're all discussing it in the discord, but I'm going to try to not call for aid until I feel like I've exhausted every, um, option. And for, for me, that kind of like final tier option probably is going to be the golems. If I start popping out some golems, like really alchemizing heavily and start popping out golems, and he just kills them left and right, then it's probably going to be that scenario where I'm like, okay, well, that that's it. That's, a, that's all she wrote. That's about all I can do. Um, we'll see you next time, folks. But hopefully that is not going to be the case. We, we shall see. So that is pretty much it. Um, we have basically no recruitment anywhere because our our income is negative. Um, that's about it. So I think honestly, I think that is probably so there there are a fair chunk of bugs throughout the game, and that's fine, right? There's plenty of balancing things like you know why are apums completely useless? <laughs> you know like. Um, there, there are balancing issues to kind of like go back and forth on, right? And there's the bugs, etc. But I really enjoy this mod. It's a really cool, really evocative, really fun mod. I think, though, an honest, like, legitimate issue with this, and I found this in both of the multi -ga multiplayer games that I've played and in a lot of the single-player games that I've played, and that's that the, the upkeep for evolutions is so incredibly like it's just bad 
it's just really bad. Your your upkeep gets to the point to where I I have the second highest income in the game by a fair margin. But my upkeep is insane. Um and that's because every single time these guys tear up, their upkeep tears up and it it tears up heavily. Right? Uh, do we have good examples? Mm, I mean, we can see from like the the machops here, right? They're nine gold a year, and then I have uh, I have some machops right here, right? These guys are thirty six gold a year, right? And that's not to say like these are these are still pretty on the cheap side, right? Um, these are sacred, so they're pretty on the cheap side. But you have you have units like the Hitmon Lees, right? that are 72 gold per year, right? 32 gold. These Pharaohs, right? 11 gold? No, never mind. So some of these are actually still pretty cheap. A lot of them are very expensive, um, and your your upkeep cost really reflects that. Um, I have yet to play a an instance of this mod where upkeep didn't become a really legitimate issue um and now i will say this right there is the option because we've already discussed this right there's the option of going i think it's conjuration yeah going into is it this no what is it i thought it was it's thaumaturgy Okay, gotcha. Of doing uh, like shiny gatherings, things like that. So you get six plus shiny machops, um, and and we would I would absolutely go that route. <laughs> like I would absolutely go that route for upkeep free um, units. But that's really far down there. Like you got to think we're only 40, 41 turns in. Like I I could have that at this point, right? But I I be blitzing through my earth gems super fast and what would i get out of it i'd get like 40 or 50 free upkeep free machops not even machamps just machops that i would then have to spend like 10 turns leveling up to machamps it's like that's a that's such a huge investment just to get upkeep free units um but anyways so that's what's going on we have a whole lot of stuff um it's not looking good for us but we're doing our best we're trying to pull things out uh trying to stem the bleeding trying to cause damage to olivine and here's the thing i think we actually are like honestly olivine is going up and down in the number of provinces that he's losing or gaining rather um violet city is just going down and down and down um, but his income is, it, it's better than what it was, sure. But his, his income and his research really aren't doing that much better. Um, even though he's taking all of this land. And the reason why they're not doing that much better is because we're harassing the shit out of him, right? We're causing crazy amounts of unrest in his land. We're counter raiding, etc. I just don't know that it's going to be enough in the long run. So... We will have to see how it goes. All right, I think I've been um, blathering on for enough time. So I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.